Hello everyone, we are here in Antelope Swiss Workshop number 21. And I have the pleasure to be with Daniel Keyes, the CEO of EOS Nation. So Daniel, about Pomelo season six, what's up? How, how that was going? Uh, you have uh, some uh, metrics or some uh, um, feedback about the Pomelo yeah, season six? Yeah, happy to talk about So yeah, season six, I think was a, a great success. Uh, we you know the big new feature as you know was for the first time we have multi pools in pomelo um, and not just multi pools but multi chains we have the eos network foundation as always supporting eos and we had some funds from the telos community that came from the telos works um and um and again as a first time we we um we saw this a bit of a, a little bit as an experiment we we you know we don't know what we don't know until we put it in front of the in in the hands of of our community and they start using it and getting feedback so the the uh the goal with multi pool is to create more opportunities for our grant owners um and also more opportunities for new matching partners to come on board uh again what the goal there is more opportunities for grant owners more money in the pool on the table for for our grant owners to to come and create grants for um so with that came some changes to a now we have some you know different pools have more specific criteria in in qualifications um and we have some new community members joining so you know folks from from telos one of the big things we were testing is you know um as far as I know, Pomelo is the first real use case leveraging IBC. It's the you know besides people playing around with being able to transfer tokens between networks. Uh, for the first time with Pomelo season six, you have a, a reason to do that. You know to bridge your Telos tokens, for example, over to to EOS and um, and we know that some of those you know it's a brand new um, feature EOS IBC. Um, or Antelope IBC, and uh, we were expecting to learn. You know how will how will people will they be able to figure out how to use it? Will it be highly adopted? Um, and and again, this was the first time having a season was is a way to test that. Um, and we're yeah we're pretty happy with the results. We got you know all kinds of feedback, both positive and negative. Um, and again, the goal with this first multi pool is to most primarily learn so that we can improve and make it better so that we can continue growing these pools over time and getting more matching partners and and providing more opportunities to to grant owners um so we had a total of four pools mm -hmm. um the the uh, everything eos pool which is basically the same thing as we've previously always had um, except actually a little bit more strict criteria and uh, because this is an EOS funded pool, um, something new for the everything EOS pool was that it had to be EOS, an EOS project rather than an antelope project, which previously was, was uh, acceptable. Um, and for Talos projects, we had the Talos pool. Uh, and then also within the EOS ecosystem, we have the EV, EOS EVM pool and we had the EOS GameFi pool. Um, and in total, we had across all of the pools, we had 118 grants approved. Um, there was 40, over 40,000 EOS and 10, 1,000, uh, Talos total of tw almost $29,000 us dollars donated to projects. Um, and uh, the total to pool value across all four pools was $182,000 this season. Um, we did see a decline in the number of donors participating mm -hmm. and the number of total value donated, um, which was a little bit, you know, given the the price of of EOS and Telos, kind of the, the market conditions mm -hmm. um, was not uh, completely unexpected. Um, but we had, yeah, a total of 468 donors participating across all the pools um which was a little bit less than than in previous seasons which i think were more like 800 or 900 people um so it's it's 
um, a reduction. We want to we want to see that grow in future seasons. Um, and one of the things we're doing right now is uh, we've sent out our feedback survey that we do every season to get direct feedback from both people who participated and people who did not participate into, um, you know, what was your experience with Pomelo season six? What was your experience with multi pools? Did you find it better or worse? Did you like or not like multi pools? What things could we make better about multi pools? What things should we stop doing? What things should we continue doing? And um, all of that will. So that's going on right now. You, you know, if you did participate in Pomelo, you probably have an email asking you to fill out our survey. Would encourage encourage your audience to do that. Um, uh, but we're also going to be looking for feedback from people who didn't participate to try to get um, some some uh, feedback on why not. Um, was it something related to the multi pool or was it related to something else? Um, so that way we can, we can improve and, and keep making Pomelo better for everybody. Perfect, Daniel. So I think, uh, this video is published on July 27. So at, at this time, normally you should have the, the, the statistics, uh, ready, I think. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're in we're currently in our analysis phase of of Pomelo season six. So technically, although donations have closed, technically the season is still in progress um, because we're doing the the analysis of of donations. We're still reviewing uh, reports from the community. We're we're looking at all the on chain and off chain data and determining you know, the final distribution to see, you know, will there be any projects that had to be disqualified because we found evidence of them breaking the rules? Mm -hmm. Will there be any adjustments to the distribution? Um, and we will be sharing all of the findings and results in an article that like we do every season. Uh, and it should be, yeah, probably by the time this is published, that, that will be, uh, yeah, that will be too. As always, we are not focused on a specific date. Uh, it's just about which month. So I think uh, end of July uh, sounds uh, good. Uh, yeah, should be, should be. Uh, should any be. Pro any promise? We 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 never know what could happen. But that's right. Uh, I just want to mention for the audience also watch the video description. There is a link to a cockpit, Pomelo cockpit. Uh, that I have created uh, with all the project on Pomelo in a nice cockpit made of one dashboard. Maybe there will be in the future more dashboard for the Pomelo cockpit. For the moment, there is just one view, one dashboard, and you can select by uh, category, select by um, matching pool, all that sim simultaneously on your keyboard uh, by control key. And uh, you have your graphics, uh, you see uh, the distribution, uh, how many donors, uh, different metrics uh, into this cockpit. So I encourage to go. It's built mm -hmm. with Power BI. That's a tool of the market to create uh, uh, dashboards, cockpit. So I, I use that a lot for the bees. Now for Pomelo, uh, for Riosdin and for uh, hidden on EOS also. So every customer B2B needs always a cockpit a dashboard to to follow where we, where you are at with your KPIs. So yeah, very cool. And, and if you like, again, I, that, there that, is that, more data I have available today. That's not, it's not going to change with our analysis that we can talk about now. Like for example, if you would like, we can get more into some of the numbers in the specific different pools. Um, some of the things that were surprising to us, like for example, one of the one of the most surprising things for us was that the pool with, um, at least in the EOS ecosystem, we had three pools in EOS. We had everything EOS, GameFi, and EVM. Everything EOS was by far the smallest pool. We had twenty eight thousand dollars in that pool, mm -hmm. compared to sixty five thousand for GameFi and EVM. Exactly, and we were expecting that the size of the pool would have a big effect on drawing people to participate in those pools. But what we actually found was that the Everything EOS pool had the most grants in it. And we were expecting with a bigger, more money in GameFi and more money in EVM, we would have more grants applying for those pools. But actually, because I guess because Everything EOS is 
we have two theories, which again, we're, we're going to be testing with our surveys. Um, one is at the Everything EOS is the most flexible, broad, you know, it's the, probably the easiest one to, to qualify for. Um, but the second reason I think we saw more projects participating in Everything EOS than in anything else is because it was the most similar to what we had in previous seasons. And in Pomelo, you've got projects that have been building season over season. So some of the projects that are participating in season six have been participating since season one, and they've, they've built the product and tailored it to the requirements of that everything EOS type pool. Yeah. And so when they came back in season six, that was, you know, they continued down that path and, and applied for that pool. Um, and we'll see, you know, and, and I think maybe, maybe the, um, one of the things I notice with a product like Pomelo is mostly, you know, even if you announce well in advance, Hey, everybody, we're going to have three pools and the most of the money is going to be in these ones. Um, a lot of times you don't, you know, the average person finds out the, the facts through experiencing rather than through reading. Yeah. So I, I suspect a lot of people came to Pomelo and submitted their grant. And then for the first time, as they were submitting the grant, realized, oh, the, the pool that I'm applying for is smaller than the rest. Um, now that we've had a season of, uh, of with multi-pool, people have learned maybe there's, a, there's some adjustments to the, the strategy if you want to you know, participate in the pool with the most money, um, you're going to have to be perhaps a little bit more nimble and able, able to pivot and target your grant to the pool where A, there's more money or B, there's less people. Um, because obviously some of these pools, like the GameFi pool, I think had the the least amount of grants. I can I can go over the, um, mm -hmm. the specifics. The, the EVM pool, $65,000 had... 23 grants approved. Mm. The GameFi pool, again, $65,000, had 13 grants approved. So only 13 people competing for $65,000 in that GameFi pool. So the biggest opportunity to to get the largest amount of funding is if, you, if you're um, qualified for that GameFi pool. And then for the Everything EOS pool, $28,000, but we had... Uh, 63 grants yes. in that pool. So the most amount of people are competing for the smallest amount of money. Um, so some of the feed, you know, some of the feedback we're getting in the, on the negative side of things is, oh, as a project participating in the Everything EOS pool, there was less money for me. Um, I, I less yes. opportunity. Yes. Uh, Myself, I was into the Everything EOS pool, and I have always been into the EOS pool since uh, season one. Right. Uh, and come season six and Hmm. Where I will go with mine web, and right. I decided to go into the EOS pool. Everything EOS pool. Also, yeah. if the amount of the matching pool is uh, twenty eight thousand, I was thinking, okay, I am not going. That's that's not only for the money. It's uh, it's uh, to continue to to build the reputation. Right. And the money will come, but uh, it's not the priority. It's more. Create the reputation, create right. your uh, your brand, create right. your your product uh, awareness, and collaborate with other and accept donation in EOS and Telos. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Telos was wrapped on right. this uh, season six, and on season seven, maybe the Telos will be no more uh, wrapped. That will it will be... still be. Yeah, there's no no It'll changes in be... that regard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're still everything okay. is running still on EOS. Um, we're bridging, you know, the tokens okay. over from other okay. chains that participate onto EOS uh, using IBC. Yeah. So, so that's a barrier. So, uh, you know, another thing I, I mentioned, um, there was only, you know, we had in total um, 40,000 EOS donated mm -hmm. to projects and only 1,040 Telos donated. So much less Telos tokens were donated to projects. Um and even in the Talos pool, um, let's look at that pool. Um, so again, there was $24,000 in the, in the Talos pool. There were uh, 19 projects approved and um, 3,000 EOS 
was donated to projects in that pool compared to 928 Talos. So people were using EOS to donate even to projects in the Talos pool, which was not unexpected for, for me. It's, it's um, you know, the, it's running on EOS. It's an yeah. EOS native yeah. project. A lot of our grant or a lot of our donors already have EOS in their wallet. So if you already have EOS, it's an, it's less of a barrier for you just to donate with EOS. There's no need for you to to transfer your Talos over to EOS so that you can donate to projects with Talos. Um, that ability to bridge your Talos tokens over to EOS is really targeted for Telos donors who don't have EOS and don't have a way of getting EOS or don't want to get EOS and they want to just use the Telos that they have and they can bridge that over. But the, there's still this barrier that, okay, well, they still have to get an EOS wallet. They've got an EOS account. They need to bridge it over to their EOS account and they need to connect their EOS account to their Pomelo account and donate with their Telos that way. Um, so again, not a, not terribly unexpected that we saw much less Telos tokens being donated. Um but again, something that over time will will hopefully improve that flow to make that easier. Um, okay, so mean, we... you just touched the point. Uh, uh, further the line, we will uh, improve the things. So maybe that's the time to to move on a little bit here uh, about the next season, season sure. seven. It's yeah. it's planned for uh, September, correct? That's right. It will be towards the end of September. We don't have the uh, exact dates announced yet, but. We should be putting out an article fairly soon in the in the coming weeks, announcing the specific dates, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so something to look forward to. Uh, the The big focus for for season seven will be to improve the grant owner experience. There's some the the process of submitting a grant uh, because we received a lot of the feedback we got with multi pools mm -hmm. is now it's become more complicated for grant owners to a understand which pool should I apply for. And with all these pools having different acceptance criteria, how do they make sure that they are are writing their grant in a way that qualifies to the particular acceptance criteria of that pool? Um, so we had some, you know, in season six, we had some very high level general acceptance criteria, um, but it wasn't always very clear to everyone applying on on what the specific acceptance criteria. So we would get a lot of yeah, more than than in previous seasons, a lot of back and forth between, um, you know, we have this action required process in Pomelo where you submit your grant and if you don't qualify immediately, we'll send you an email with some explain. Hey, here's here's why we couldn't approve you. If you change it this way, maybe you'll get a, you'll get approved. And uh, something new we had in season six, which I think was very good, was on those emails much more specific instructions. So in previous seasons, we would just say, you're an action required. Here's a link to an article that explains mm -hmm. how to qualify as a public good. In this season, we actually have custom messages for everybody that's going into action required that we would we would write to them with the specific reason um, the grant couldn't qualify and how they might address those reasons. So for season uh, seven, that would be uh, even more clear. Those ac acceptance criteria per per uh, matching pool. Yes, the, and, the, and and the, the way we'll do that the is the entrance. The entrance criteria exactly. will be uh, made uh, will be um, expressed clearly, more clearly. I think that's right, and that'll be on the on the grant application form itself. So it, yes. rather than us having to you submit, you know. People spend all this work and time writing a nice grant application, translating it, coming to us, and we say, sorry, you need to change it. And then they go back, and then they submit it again, and then maybe it's still not good enough, and they come back maybe a few times. So that's frustrating for the grant owner. It takes a lot of time from us, which means that we can't spend as much time doing a, you know, we want to do a better job, um, actually, you know, for example, not accepting the grants that maybe are scammers that are you know pretending they're somebody who they're not and when you're when you're spending all of your time just trying to help people figure out how to qualify you can't spend as much time doing some of that important work so mm -hmm. one of the so the goal is make a better experience for our grant owners so that it's more likely that they can get approved the first time that it's easier for us to review the grant application so we don't have to spend as much time and then we can reallocate that time that we're not spending 
on raising the bar of you know weeding out some of the the bad actors and and raising mm-hmm. the quality of the grants that that, it, that get accepted okay. um, and the way that we're going to be doing that is by having you know right now on the grant application there's really just two there's like a grant description and your last season update and it's just big general blocks of text um, going forward what we'll have is some more specific questions that re- that you know specifically ask questions related to the criteria of the pool like how do you meet this criteria um and yeah. and yeah. and again it makes it easier for the grant owner submitting the application to make sure they're answering the questions that we're looking for in mm-hmm. in tailored to the matching criteria yeah and it's easier for us to review because we know um you know we know where to look for what information and it's more likely that the information we need is there in the first time yeah that makes sense uh you set you settle the acceptance criteria f- from the from the onset uh yeah. it's clear um and you are also planning to let the community maybe a part of the community maybe to 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 set those criteria together with you well the criteria is set by the matching partners the matching partners so, okay, okay so the the matching partners will be the ones that but one thing that we will be doing is um again being more specific with our matching partners at the beginning mm. to make yeah. sure we you know make sure we fully understand the the acceptance criteria in more detail mm-hmm. and that it's again clearly communicated both in advance on you know on the articles that we that we release before the season and right on the on the grant application so that it's much more clear for someone who's applying um, the, we're also exploring um so I, I can't i don't have any of official news to announce on what the matching pools will be yet but i can say that um you know the the enf as the primary matching partner has been hearing this feedback too um and they will be likely simplifying the you know instead of having three pools um, we're actually, you know, I, I mentioned at the beginning, we have the survey going out to, to ask people, how did you, what did you, how did you feel about multi pools? Um, it, it's possible we'll get one pool back to one pool from the ENF or split it into two pools hmm. and two pools of equal value instead of one tiny pool, two bigger pools. Um, we would, we would have, um, likely, you know, two larger pools, which is going to help reduce some of that frustration with with folks who were only able to qualify for the smallest pool, mm. um, and having very specific ma- criteria. So the the criteria will be a little bit more broad, a little mm. bit easier to to get approved in that regard. And again, more money available because it's not split across three pools. It's yeah again potentially two or at, or maybe even one. Um, and yeah. then again, we'll we'll still try to have the Italos and and potentially other mm-hmm. um, ecosystem pools. Yeah, but I love with Pomelo every season. It's uh, improving. Uh, there is also some time uh, some uh, experiment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we have to try experiment when That's you right. do innovation. You you need to do some experiment, and maybe you receive feedback. And those feedback, uh, there are pros, there are cons, and uh, then you have to adapt your uh, your uh, solution, your uh, product, and that's what you yeah. do because Pomelo is also uh, a product in himself. Yeah. Uh, exactly, and uh, you have to gamify. Uh, better you have uh, to to render this pomelo uh, nice platform with nice gamification embedded and uh, that's what you, you try to do uh, every time uh, yeah. I, lo- I love it about the yeah. bounty uh, yeah i know that we speak always of the the bounties uh, i love this concept um, and that's the perfect uh, momentum between pomelo 6 and pomelo 7 uh, yep. to to try to do some play token we were discussing that the, on the last uh, episode so where are we at with that i know that you are working uh, like uh, lions mm-hmm. Pom- pomelo lions yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, have you uh, something to about the about the progress on that because yeah 
I know that some people like me for sure we want to 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 play uh yeah. with the, the spomelo token so so, token. so we are in the the middle of user testing um we've we've began with test doing user testing with some members of the eos network foundation they're our first pool of testers so we're sort of in this closed uh beta alpha test phase right now um again like you said using fake play tokens you know, monopoly money kind of thing to just test test out the the features. Um, we've been getting some really great feedback from from our initial set of testers. Mm -hmm. um, based on that feedback, there's certain things we've decided to redesign, and we're right now in the process of implementing that. Re so the, the 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 new design has been completed. We've taken that design back to those testers and said, "Hey, do you like this design better than the old one?" And they said overwhelmingly, "Yeah, this is way better." Um, and, and so now that the, the engineers on our team are, um, uh, working on implementing this new design and our goal is to still have this out before season seven, again, with the nature of product development and technology things happen and it's, it's, you know, it's, I can't guarantee that, but that's the, that's still the goal. And I think it's, I think it's achievable, um, and we should be expanding our test audience for sure before season seven so i know i know patrick you're eager to to get in there and start playing um i i absolutely think that we it's it's very likely that we'll we'll at the very minimum we're going to expand our testing to a wider audience before season seven but our goal is actually to have the live pomelo with real eos not play tokens yeah. before before season seven so people can actually really start using it to start funding, you know, yeah. the, the things yeah. they need to fund to start, you know, again, we see uh, bounties as a key piece that helps our grant owners help deliver on the milestones because it's, it's a way for them to, you know, take the funds you earned with your grant and find people to help you build those milestones and, and, um, you know, find that talent and pay that talent right through Pomelo. Yeah, totally. Uh, middle August, soon maybe something uh, as first uh, tester uh, yeah something uh, achievable uh i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah that's the goal that's the goal that's the goal huh? yeah I, I i want to do so for uh, eos din for sure for eos din uh, there is an update on eos din during this workshop and uh, i have a campaign planned for uh, let's say august until uh September, second se week of September, so six week program, but not just for the Bounty, uh, for uh, find affiliates for mm -hmm. the EOSDIN platform, and at the same time, be in contact with the 30 best Pomelo uh, donors on Pomelo and give them a chance to go on EOSDIN and make uh, ratings and reviews and cool. the, the same Bounty program for the L1 delegate on Eden on EOS. So with EOS Dean, we, we need what? We need affiliates, so Web3 solution, dApps, and we need the users. As every platform, we have always the same uh, uh, problematic. Uh, and Pomelo, you have what? You have a solution listed on it, uh, and you have on the other side donors, the, the the users going there and make donate make their donation. So Eosin is just an extension of projects that are on Pomelo and that want to have uh, some uh, network advertising uh, by the bees that are listed on uh, Eosin. By the way, uh, cool. and they can they can help those uh, those project the solution. So we are yeah. totally totally complementary. There is no uh, fighting between the solution we are just between the platform between the platform we yeah. are we are just uh complementary uh one plus one equal three we want to move the ship for uh the antelope network so for uh eos uh yeah. telos ux yeah. wax yeah. and yeah. we yeah. yeah we love seeing the community extending and and building on on what we've got on, on well and that's part of you know that's kind of the beauty of Web3. All of the data is open and available. 
Yeah. Um, you know, you, anyone can take it and build on top of it and, and extend and, and we love seeing that. And then there's even opportunities to get funding for that extension by creating a grant on Pomelo. And, and we've seen some, some teams do that like yourself and EOS support with their EOS audit. Um, Shout out to your support. Yeah, they are publishing yeah. every time their uh, audit about the Pomelo project that are yeah. affi affiliated with them, myself with MindWeb, for example, uh, affiliated with uh, EOS support. So I enjoy to see the the audit reports yeah. by uh, yeah. EOS support. That's very, uh, okay. that's, an <laughs> that's an essential um, um, feature. Um, those audit uh, reports. Yeah. That's very important. And it sounds like you, with your ratings, there's there's something in there too. So we'd love to see, you know, EOS Audit is one organization that has their view and point of view on what is a valuable project and what is a evidence of yes, they did they met their pro promise or no, they didn't. Or um, and so more the more and more people that do that sort of thing, the better because you get a a broader yeah uh, a perspective from the community on what projects actually are valuable and worth donating to you know collections are one way that we we try to enable the community to do that you know get letting anybody on pomelo create a collection of the projects they find the most valuable um but then also these you know these extensions like audit and usd and help fuel more information into making those decisions which is awesome yeah and uh I, I just want to do a little parenthesis on hidden onios uh, mm -hmm. that is turning into a worker proposal system with an IT data governance embedded in it. And we have to select projects that benefit EOS and more than EOS, the antelope networks. And we have also uh, into the purpose paper of Eden Onios, you can say purpose paper equal white paper. Huh? Uh, there is uh, some explanation about doing audit. Audit. We want to audit the project because we want also to incubate them into the incubator of Eden Onios. So I think we are all uh, indeed uh, doing the same things or similar things at a level slightly maybe uh, different, but at the end of the day, we want to give more value for the project on the Antelope networks and let the user jump from one Antelope network to one another network and doing a EOS digital extended network, that's EOS DIN. But mm -hmm. My EOS DIN is your EOS DIN. <laughs> That's right. That's beautiful. So uh, we are all into the same boat. We want the same things. And we want to uh, increase the visibility of EOS, the visibility of every Antelope network indeed. And Pomelo helps. Uh, EOS support helps. Eden on EOS can help definitely. Definitely. No, definitely. Mm -hmm. Eden on EOS can help. Uh, everyone can help if he has a platform or if he has no platform, he can collaborate with someone that has a platform. So indeed, we, we are in the collaboration era. In, we are into the web tree. So that's what we have to, to do, Daniel, I think. 100%. Uh, yeah. So I nailed it. there is more to speak as all, always, uh, but at the, at the point we have to wrap it up, at the point we have to wrap it up. So, and uh, let's uh, some uh, mystery for the next uh, episode with you uh, when the Pomelo season seven in September will begin. We will do, uh, as always, a little uh, update on that. Sure, happy to. Yeah, anytime, Patrick. Thanks for having me on. Uh, great conversation. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next one. Thank you. Absolutely. And you know how we're wrapping up those episodes, I think. Of course. Of course. Are you going to count us in? Absolutely. Three, two, one, zero. Go, Pomelo! Go, Pomelo! <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Take care. Have a good day. Bye. Take care.